guys, you remember my dog, Ember. She's gonna be part of this video today. You say hi, Ember. Say hi. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> so I wanna show you guys what we do for this retractable tie out that we have for Ember. Um, it's worked out really well for us and I'm just gonna kinda of take you through the whole thing, why we use it and a couple other things added onto that. So uh, we decided to get this because originally we had a tie out that kind of corkscrewed into the ground, um, just kind of that metal corkscrew that you know that you kind of twist into the ground and it was tied to a coated cable. And we would tie her out with that and it worked good, good for a while. Hi. And then, uh, hi, you want to be in too? So anyway, as she's gotten older, she's gotten a bit more skittish about the cable and kind of got freaked out whenever it would touch her feet or kind of touch her in any way. So we wanted to come up with something different that would hopefully not spook her quite as badly. So we got this retractable clothesline and you've seen um, a video maybe that I did a few years ago about a retractable clothesline and so we decided to try that and hook it to her um, leash. So this is just a regular cheapo nylon leash that we attach to the end of the retractable clothesline. So you can see the leash is hooked to her and at the end of the clothesline is this metal clip or coil that you would normally hook to like a hook on a post or a wall for your clothesline and then we have the cable that leads all the way up to the unit that's hooked to the house. I'm trying to get a good view and reach up there because it's really high. So it says Homey Base. I guess that must be the brand that we got it that we got and we got that from Amazon and doggy one's in. Come here. And then we put this little hook on the side of the house to hook that leash on there because when the wind blows, otherwise that will, you know, swing around and hit our glass window and that's not good news. So anyway, this is kind of the setup that we have and this unit um, swivels on its anchor there and pulls out there. Now this comes with, the one that we bought anyway, I think it came with about 40 feet of cable in it and that was just too much in there that would give her too wide of a radius to be roaming into the yard and maybe going potty where she's not supposed to go. So what I did is I pulled the entire cable out as, as far as it would go until it stopped. Then I marked the spot where is it would be the furthest that we want her to go and I just reattached that metal clip to the end of it. So I cut it and retied it um, into that clip so that it can only go I think about 20 22 feet somewhere around there a radius around you know the back door so so far this has worked out really well for us and she doesn't get all spooked when um, you know because the the tie out can't basically get around her feet where she thinks she's going to trip on it or anything so she seems to really like it she comes out here and she'll lay down on the deck and kind of bask in the sun so it's not so tight that it's going to be yanking on her neck it won't like injure her neck or, or anything like that um, but yet it's a strong enough spring that when we do unhook it it will slowly retract back up so it's not like if you let go of it it'll snap back um, this one that we got isn't anyway so i feel okay about that if you're thinking about getting one of these for your dog, um, just a couple of things to keep in mind. If your dog is not used to being tied out like Ember is, um, you may want to watch and like train your dog with something like this. I, my fear is that um, a dog that isn't used to something like this or used to being tied out and having limits like this would um, not recognize that and maybe take off running and get choked or injured in some way or break the mechanism or tear it off the wall that you have it on or something like that. So just a word, strong word of caution about using one of these. Um, really know um, what your dog is used to and um, maybe do some training on tie outs or something before you do something like this. Also, if you have just a really large dog that um, may have a tendency to pull and tug once it gets to the end of the line, um, I'm not sure how sturdy this unit is for something like that. Um, like I said, it's a retractable clothesline, so I'm sure it can handle some weight, but how much wear and tear it can handle, I really don't know. So disclaimer, you know, do this at your own risk, you know, be careful with your dog um, and just be careful. <laughs> 
We've had this now for several months and it's been working out great. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to mention though is um, since we did have this through the winter, all last winter, um, when it gets really cold out, really freezing cold, the, the cable inside there will kind of freeze in that position and when you go and pull the line out, it will kind of have that large coil to it. So when it wants to retract, it takes a longer time for it to go back up in there. So you kind of have to encourage it along a little bit. Um, we never had any serious trouble with that. It just took a little bit longer for it to retract back up into the um, unit there. Another thing I want to show you, and i um, trying to pull this and get some slack at the same time. Um, so this is a plastic cable. And you can see right here, there's a couple of spots where it's doing this. The plastic coating has cracked maybe from being pulled on, maybe from the extreme weather that we've subjected it to so far. But either way, um, it has cracked and it's showing the nylon string underneath. And this hasn't caused any huge problems, but let me show you what happens here. So as this is retracting back up in there, it'll catch on that part that's broken. And so you kind of have to wiggle it and encourage it back in there. Again, that's not a huge problem so far. It hasn't tangled or broken completely. Um, I think the nylon string or cord inside there is rather strong. So it's been okay. It's just a little annoying that it gets hung up, you know, when it's trying to retract. So I've been thinking, what can we replace that cable with that would work in this unit and um, hold up to weather, um, hold up to, you know, the tugging and, and all that. So I picked up this here, a package of paracord at the store this was pretty cheap only um gosh i think it was probably less than ten dollars between five and ten dollars i think at walmart um so i'm thinking paracord should work it's only a little bit wider than that cable is and it's flexible and lightweight so i'm thinking that this might work to replace that cord so i'm gonna try to replace the cord i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to get that unit apart or if i'll have to somehow pull the cable all the way out and cut it and connect it to this somehow. I really don't know, but I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. that when we put this up here that was kind of hard to get those screws in there so I'm kind of afraid to take it off of there but I think that's my only option I don't see anywhere on here there is a seam along there I could probably try to pop this loose but I don't want to break it I don't see any other screws or anything that make it so you can open this up and these right here are riveted on here, so it's not like I can take it off the bracket either. I think my only choice is to loosen these a little bit and then pop it up and off. I got that off fairly easy um, and again I don't see any way to get this apart I don't think You know what it can't come apart because right along that seam is where it's riveted so um, looks like I'm gonna have to pull out the cable and see what it looks like in there when I get to the end of it almost there okay I can see you guys see that in there that's the end where it's stuck into the reel right there Okay, I gave this some thought, and here's what I brought out to work on this. Of course, I've got the paracord that I showed you. I'm going to measure that to about 22 feet. That's what I need for that. 
Um, so there's that. And I brought out a lighter so that I can melt the end of the paracord so it doesn't unravel or fray. I brought a clamp, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Measuring tape so I can measure out the cord. Scissors to cut it. And this. This is a little teeny tiny metal carabiner with little hinge thingies there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the cord or the cable out of the unit until there's only a few inches left. And I'm going to cut it and make a slip knot in that and then put that on one end of this. And then with the paracord, I'm gonna make a slip knot and put on the other end of this. So this should be far enough inside the device that um, even if it gets pulled out that far it shouldn't really affect the function of it it should be up against that reel for most of the time anyway so I think it'll be okay to have this up inside there I'm hoping because if this doesn't work I don't know what I'll do um, so we're gonna try this I'm gonna try to join the two together with this I had looked up some knots um, like a double fisherman's knot or something like that that is really strong really good for connecting two ropes together but being that these are two different materials, I'm not sure how well they would grip together in a knot like that or any other kind of knot. Um, so I'm gonna forego that and just do the slip knot on this and hope and pray for the best. Okay, I'm going to try to show you this slip knot. Maybe, hopefully it'll work. I don't know, that seems kind of big, doesn't it? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, it'll go on there just fine. And it'll tighten down. I just don't know if that's too much bulk inside of that unit. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna try it anyway. All right, I'm gonna pull all of this out. And I'm gonna use this clamp to clamp this so it doesn't slide back in there while I'm working on it. See, you just got that clamp on there like that to keep that from getting away from me and going back in and unwinding this whole thing. All right, so I'm gonna make a cut probably, I don't know, right, right about here. I'm just gonna do another slip knot like I did on the paracord. hard to do without three hands. Okay, I've got a little slip knot in there now. I'm going to attach this. Like that. Pull it tight. And now they both are grabbed on there and they're both very tight on there. Now the true test is gonna be undoing the clip and seeing if this will roll up and retract with all this bulk in there. I don't know, we'll see.
I don't want to go too far because I don't have this end tied to anything yet. So let me get this tied to that hook and the leash so I don't lose track of that. So I'm going to clamp this. And I almost lost it. Clamp that so it can't all go in there. See, this just has a knot inside there. So I'm just going to push this back up through. Like that. And take this out. And then I'll feed the paracord up through there and tie a knot and then pull it back. And it should hold in there just fine. Okay, this is a bit thicker than the other stuff. So I'm going to see if I can push it through with the screwdriver. You guys have one of these screwdrivers? These are really cool. Has two Phillips here. Pull it out. It has two regular ones there that you can pull out and switch. And you can use these as little sockets. Guess where I got that idea from? Garden Fork. One of my favorite channels. Go check them out if you haven't already. Alright, so that's finally going up through there. There. So just tie a knot in that. And pull it tight. I could probably maybe melt that together a little bit if I wanted to, but I don't think that's going to be any big problem there. Again, it's so big it might not fit down inside there like the other cord did, but I think it's going to be close enough. That's enough room on that loop to put the leash through. So we'll get this put through here. And just open that handle up and pull the rest of the leash through. Like so. I'm going to release this clip. And it's not going to retract all that great because it's kind of stuffed and crammed in there. Now, I don't know over time if, you know, after this paracord gets pulled and stretched a little bit, maybe it'll thin out and it'll retract a little bit better. But I guess I'm going to put this back up on the house and we're going to test it out and see how well it works. Okay, so far it's working okay. Um, I think it's going to take a little bit of encouragement to get that paracord to wind back up in there um, just because it's a little bit thicker. Um, I think I could have gotten a thinner paracord, but I just don't know how it's going to hold up against that plastic edge. So I guess time will tell. Um, maybe I'll post an update, you know, in a few months and see if we still have this and still if it's still working okay. If you guys have other suggestions on how to improve on this, um, things to try um, maybe a different kind of cord or something like that um, please comment below and as always thank you for watching and hitting the like and subscribe buttons and that little bell down below as well um, that way you can be notified whenever we put out a new video and I will talk to you guys later you want to say goodbye <laughs> catch you later bye